To be honest, the result of the vote by the British Parliament was completely unexpected to me. I think we're all used to seeing Western countries act in line with the wishes and the stance of their key partner, i.e. the United States, without any significant opposition. At least it seems to be that way. That's why this disruption has been unexpected. It really came as a big surprise to me. This shows that although Britain is the main geopolitical ally of the US in Europe and the world, there are people who are guided by national interests and common sense and value their sovereignty. Also, I think the vote's outcome is the result of the analysis of what's been happening over the last several years. I mean the tragic events in the Middle East and other countries. It's extremely challenging to reach the proclaimed goals, and here I refer to the campaigns in Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya and other countries. We know what's happening in Egypt, so perhaps, and in fact, I'm quite sure that this is the case, that the people are analysing the developments, drawing conclusions and responding in a certain way. Now, coming back to the incident in Syria, we've seen earlier calls by the Syrian government for the international community to investigate their claims of the rebels' use of chemical weapons. Unfortunately, this has not been done. We have to rely on common sense, and here's what it tells us. Syria's government troops are on the offensive and have surrounded the opposition in several areas of the country. In these conditions, to play into the hands of those who are constantly calling for military intervention would be an incredibly ridiculous thing to do, especially on the eve of the UN mission's arrival. It defies any logic. That's why I'm convinced that it's nothing but a provocation on the part of those who want to drag other countries into the Syrian conflict, those who want to win support from the world's powerful players, first and foremost the US. I have no doubts about this. Our American colleagues and friends insist they have the evidence that the government troops did use weapons of mass destruction, in this case chemical weapons. Well, in this case they'd better present this evidence to the UN inspectors and to the Security Council. They claim they cannot show this evidence because it's secret. But this excuse doesn't hold water. There's a sign of disrespect towards your partners and other stakeholders. If you have the evidence, you should present it. If it's not presented, it means they don't have it. They say they've intercepted some communications, which don't prove anything, but fundamental decisions, like the decision to use force against a sovereign nation, can't be based on such evidence. First of all, I would address Obama not as my colleague, not as the US president, not as the head of state, but as a Nobel Peace Prize winner. We should recall what has been happening over the past decade. How many times did the US initiate military conflicts in various parts of the world? Has this ever helped to resolve even one problem? I've already mentioned Afghanistan, Iraq and Libya. There's no peace there, no democracy. None of these things our partners sought to bring there. They don't even have basic civil peace and some kind of balance. You have to consider this before you make a decision to launch airstrikes, which will certainly result in casualties, including civilians. Can't you think about that? Shouldn't you think about that? I strongly believe one should think about that. And addressing him as my colleague, I would tell him that soon we'll have a meeting in St. Petersburg. I hope the US president comes. We will certainly have a chance to discuss, among other things, the Syrian issue with our colleagues from around the world. Of course, the G20 is not a formal institution with legal authority. It is just a platform, not one that can replace the UN Security Council. The Security Council alone can sanction the use of force. But it is a good platform for discussing the issue. So why don't we use it? By the way, as regards the interests of the US, even Americans themselves, if you take a look at their media, at what their politicians and experts say, they have mixed opinions about the potential military intervention. Most analysts today tend to agree that the intervention in Iraq was a mistake. So if you admit that you have made a mistake in the past, what makes you think that you can't make a mistake today? All this should help us realize that such decisions can't be made in haste. Is the US really interested in undermining the international security system, the foundations of international law? Is it likely to improve America's reputation in the world? I doubt it. We urge them to think twice before making a decision which clearly goes against the position of the international community and undermines the entire system of security.